proper grooming of any breed requires the right equipment. Start with the Golden A5 Clipper, the standard tool for small animal grooming. This clipper is now available in one or two speed units and uses any one of a wide variety of detachable blades. Specific blade information will be included in the grooming portion of this tape. Other equipment should include an Oster Petite mat comb, a single row rake, greyhound comb, and slicker brushes. Grooming shears, like the Oster Golden Precision shears, are used to shape the coat. Thinning shears are used to blend the coat for a more natural look. A scissor type or guillotine nail trimmer is used for cutting the nails. Or you may choose to use an Oster electric nail groomer. Quick stop is used to stop any nail bleeding. Oster shampoos and cream rinse produce excellent results. Protein shampoo strengthens limp, dull coats, leaving a crisp texture when used on terrier coats. Coat brightener shampoo is used to add luster, especially to longer coated dogs. White coat shampoo is used to re-whiten coats that may have yellowed. Medicated shampoo helps promote the healing of irritated areas. Flea and tick shampoo is very effective against common pests. Easy on Eyes has a mild formula that helps reduce eye and skin irritation. Cream Rinse builds coat body, combats dryness, and helps eliminate tangling. You will also need an ear wash for cleaning the insides of ears. Grooming aerosols, which help assist you in the dematting process, include Oster Coat Conditioner and Tangle Remover. Oster also offers high velocity dryers, which include the stand dryer with variable settings, or the cage and table dryer. Spray disinfectant is designed to help sanitize your clipper, blade, tools, and table in between each grooming session. Oster Cool Lube helps you cool off your blades, and Oster Blade Wash cleans up your blades after they have worked hard for you. A merry little stub of a tail that wags the whole dog. Ears flying in the breeze. Soft eyes filled with love. The Cocker Spaniel, smallest of the sporting group, is one of the breeds most popular as a family companion. This breed's many pleasing personality traits has helped him reach the top in registrations with the American Kennel Club. The Cocker is a popular pet because he is adaptable and quickly adjusts to city or country living. An ideal family dog, he rides willingly in the car, loves to go for a walk, and keeps you company at home. He does well in obedience work and has an intense desire to please his master. The Cocker's background and instincts can make him popular as a hunting companion. He can be properly trained to be a good gun dog, and if kept in shorter coat, grooming is not a problem. The history of the Spaniel family goes back into antiquity. Early art of hunting groups show Spaniel-like dogs. Earlier Spaniels were divided into land Spaniels and water Spaniels. These divisions were later further separated by size. The Cockers and smaller toy-type Spaniels were notably different and were used for different purposes, again making it necessary to further divide the breeds. The smallest of these eventually became the English Toy Spaniels, used only as pets. Originally, the English Cocker and what later became known as the American Cocker were interbred and came out of the same basic background. According to some authorities, the Cocker Spaniel got its name from its ability in assisting the hunters in flushing up woodcocks. Research was begun to separate the pedigrees of the English Cockers from those of Canada and the United States to find those of the pure English lines. By 1941, this information was finally available so the two types of Cocker breeds could be separated. From the official standard of the breed, we find the Cocker Spaniel described as having a sturdy, compact body and a cleanly chiseled and refined head with the overall dog in complete balance and of ideal size. There are many other specifics included in the breed standard, 
but we shall concern ourselves only with those details that directly apply to the way we present a finished pet profile for the breed. The cocker's head is in nice proportion and balance to the rest of the body. The skull is nicely rounded with no appearance of flatness. The eyebrows are clearly defined with a pronounced stop. The clever professional groomer can disguise a poor head shape by the treatment of the head coat and blending of the crown above the eyebrows at the stop. The muzzle in front of the eye is well chiseled. It is broad and deep with square, even jaws. The upper lip is full and of sufficient depth to cover the lower jaw. The teeth are strong and meet in a scissor bite. The eyes are round and full, looking directly forward. The expression appears to be intelligent, alert, and appealing. The ears are long, hang loosely, are well feathered, and should be set on the head no higher than in line with the lower part of the eye. The neck is muscular, rises strongly from the shoulders, and has a slight arch as it tapers to join the head. The body is short and compact and gives the impression of strength. The back is strong and slopes slightly downward from the shoulders to the tail. The tail is docked and set on in a line with the top line of the back or slightly higher. The hips are wide and the rear quarters are well-rounded and muscular. Rear legs are strong and well-muscled with good angulation at the stifle. The chest should be deep and should appear to reach at least to the elbows with sufficient width for heart and lungs. The ears, chest, abdomen and leg areas are well feathered. The coat is silky in texture, flat or only slightly wavy. Excessive curly coat or cottony texture is not desirable. And now, here is the famous writer, author, lecturer, and certified master groomer, Dorothy Wallen. It gives me great pleasure to work with Oster in the production of another educational grooming video. We hope that the techniques of good grooming have been served so that our industry may become more standardized on a nationwide basis. The discriminating cocker owner or the professional groomer in competition requires a more natural looking coat. It gives me great pleasure to introduce award-winning professional groomer Liz Paul to show us this more natural technique. To show her work on this buff cocker, Liz is using a dog that has been pre-bathed and fluff dried. We begin this technique showing work on the sides of the head. Do the cheek area using the number 10 blade and working against the lay of the coat. Clip from the front opening of the ear to the back corner of the eye. With the same blade, clip an inverted V at the stop to emphasize the stop and the eye expression. Work forward against the lay of the coat to clean the top of the muzzle. Also clip the sides of the muzzle and the edge of the lip with the number 10 blade. Clip the underside of the bottom jaw with the number 10 blade against the lay of the coat. Also clip the front of the neck area in a U shape with the lay of the coat to a point about one half inch above the breastbone. Clean the flu area on the bottom lip and the very front of the muzzle with a number 30 blade. Clip the top of the crown on the head from a point about two and a half inches behind the pronounced eyebrow to the base of the occiput, working with the lay of the coat and using a number 10 blade. If you use a number seven blade here against the lay, it will leave a smoother finish. Begin clipping the side of the neck downward 
from a point right behind the back of the ear and tapering off at the shoulder. To give the cocker ear a nicely balanced look, clip off all the hair on an area approximately one-third of the distance down from the top of the ear. The entire clipped area at the top of the ear should be short and velvety in appearance. In this case, the groomer has determined the necessary length of the shaved area. This is a show type or competition trim, so she is working against the lay of the coat using a number 10 blade and blending off where the ear meets the head. Both sides of the ear must be clipped to the same point. Also clean around the entire base of the ear where it meets the head. Clean carefully around the front ear opening with a number 10 blade or a blunt pointed scissor to rid the area of any straggly hairs. Finish a neat tailored look of the ear by scissoring the edge of the clippered area. Hold your scissor at a 45 degree angle to get a neat edge with less danger of nicking the ear. Blend the edges of the area under the ear along the side of the neck where front and back neck coat meet working down into the shoulder. Carefully remove the coat from between the pads of the feet using an Oster number 30 or number 40 blade. Always check for chewing gum small stones, weeds, or other debris that may be caught in the coat between the pads. Scissor the coat on the bottom of the foot straight across and do final shaping of the feet later. It is wise to clean the underbelly area, paying particular attention to the area around the penis of the male dog. Remove any matting on the upper inside flanks of the rear legs. To begin the thinning shear technique, we first bulk thin the neck and entire body coat using the coarse thinning shears. This technique gives the body coat a better, smoother lay. 
bulk thin to the point where the skirting drops down from the rib cage. The thinning shear is inserted into the coat as shown here and one cut made at the base of the coat. Work in this manner on the entire body coat following the lay of the coat. Thinning shears are never used to cut across the lay of the coat as this would leave ridges in the coat. After bulk thinning is completed, comb out all loose coat and check for smoothness. After combing out the thin coat, remove any dead coat, excessive undercoat, and any of fuzzy appearance of the body coat. Various tools can be used to do this work. Lava rock, a shedding blade, or a stripping comb can be used. Thinning shear work for final blending is always done working with the lay of the coat. Do final blending on the neck area and expose the shoulder lay. Blend the side coat to give a natural looking line at the skirting. Clean around the anus with a blunt pointed scissor. Use thinning shears to blend down the tail coat and the area around the base of the tail. If the cocker is heavily coated, blend down the coat along the angulation of the rear leg so there is no bunchy coat to distort the smooth flow of line from the top of the rump down over the hock area to the base of the leg coat. To complete the work on the leg coat around the feet, place the dog in a natural stance on the table and comb all the leg coat down into place. Use a long curved shears to scissor a large round foot. After shaping the foot, scissor a slightly rounded bottom of the foot with a nice clean line at the very bottom. Show a well let down hock by rounding the leg coat slightly below the hock joint to the bottom of the foot. All that is left to finish this pretty American cocker is to define the crown area above the eyes. The breed standard tells us the skull is rounded but not exaggerated with no tendency to a flat look. Blend the crown area with thinning shears to give a nicely domed look to the head. To finish off this lovely head, shape the bottom of the ear for a neater look and better balance using long, curved shears.
The work you have just seen would be suitable for competition at grooming contests. If you own your own cocker or are able to work on one in good coat, this would be a good technique to practice. Many professional groomers are more familiar with the use of clipper work to do the body coat on the American Cocker Spaniel. This dog was previously dematted, rebathed, and dried, and will now be finished in this more common clippered technique. The head work on this dog was completed as shown previously on the first Cocker. The body work is done using a number five finishing blade. Work with the lay of the coat beginning on the back of the neck and work back to the tail. Clip the shoulder area and the sides of the rib cage to the turn of the rib. Follow the angle of the lay of the coat to avoid ridges in the finish. Blend off at the turn of the rib. The tail will also be finished using a number 5F finishing oyster blade. This technique is more popular with the average groomer than the use of thinning shears for body work. It is an easier technique for most groomers to master, especially on a thick coat. The profile lines give the same pattern as the previous cocker, with a shorter clipped body coat and slightly less leg coat. I'd like to introduce you to another award-winning groomer, Jackie Bowman, who will demonstrate a shorter pet trim suitable for the needs of the average pet cocker owner. This cocker demonstrates the normal grooming job the professional groomer faces in this breed. When a client books a cocker for grooming, the coat is frequently matted and tangled with brambles and weeds. Jackie removes excess body coat before the bath using a number 7F Oster blade on the new dual speed clipper. This two-speed Golden A5 clipper has extra speed on the high setting to drive the blade through the thick coat with greater ease. After extra body coat has been removed, excess hair on the head and ears is also clipped off using the number 7F blade. The underside of the muzzle and the front of the neck is clipped in a U-shape using the same blade. With a number 15 blade, carefully clean the underside of the belly area. If the cocker comes in badly matted on the underbelly, shave a strip off the entire underside of the body leaving only a small amount of side coat for skirting. Also clean the inside flank of the rear legs. Check at the top and side of the front leg. If there are bad mats in the armpits, remove them by clipping carefully with a number 15 blade. 
Pet owners rarely check this area, and heavy mats at the inside top of the front leg could cause irritation. An Oster number 40 blade can be used most efficiently to remove coat and matting between the pads of the feet. The number 40 blade cuts closer, cannot catch the webs of the feet, and cuts through the coat quickly and thoroughly. After all rough clipper work is completed, begin dematting work by scissoring off excessive length of leg coat. Use Oster coat conditioner on heavily matted areas to relieve static and aid in dematting. The Oster Petite mat comb is worked in behind the mats and comb through the mat in a sawing motion. Use the other hand to hold onto the coat behind the mat so there is no unnecessary pulling of the skin. After the matted area has been opened, use a curved universal slicker brush to remove the loosened mats from the coat. A deep tooth comb checks for the remaining mats. Some dogs object to having work done on their feet and nails clipped. It is wise to have another groomer or the dog's owner assist in clipping the nails. The cocker has large drop ears that are often prone to infection. Ears should be washed using a good ear preparation, then carefully wiped out. A good cleansing bath is necessary to prepare the coat for final finishing. Attach the dog with a noose fastened to the back wall of the tub area to prevent it from jumping from the tub. Wet the coat thoroughly, keeping the water source right down on the coat for better penetration. Work up a good suds using Oster Protein Shampoo to lift out the dirt and debris. After the first sudsing, rinse and resets. Most cockers need at least two sudsing because of the density of the coat. After final sudsing is complete, rinse until all shampoo is removed. Coat should feel squeaky clean, not slippery, if properly rinsed. A conditioning cream rinse can be used if desired. Squeeze out extra water from the coat. Towel off the excess water while the dog is in the chub. Wrap the dog in a towel, then carry it to the drying table.
Refasten the dog in the grooming noose for better control. Drying will be speeded up if most of the excess water is toweled off before beginning the drying process. Proper drying technique is to only brush dry the area of the coat that is being blown about by the dryer. Move the coat back and forth with your brush to allow the warm airflow to penetrate to the skin. Do not brush harshly as this could cause brush burns. Dry the entire dog in this manner, working with the lay of the coat on the body, and fluff dry the leg coat for final finishing. To begin final finishing of the head work on this pet trim, use a number 7F blade and clip the cheek area against the lay of the coat. Clean the cheek area in front of the ear to the back corner of the eye. The top and sides of the muzzle are also clipped with the number 7F blade, leaving a soft velvety finish. The underside of the throat and the front of the neck are clipped with the number 7F blade, and the front of the neck is a U-shape. Clip the U-shape against the lay of the coat from a point one and a half to two inches above the breastbone, completing the U-shape under the base of the ears. To do the top of the head and the back of the neck, begin clipping at a point behind the crown. Use a number 7F and do the rear top of the head with the lay of the coat. Work back between the ears and down the back of the neck. Skim the point where the front and back neck coat meet to blend, working down into the shoulder. The ears are done with a number 15 blade against the grain. Clipping against the grain leaves a smoother finish. Take care not to catch the notches of the ear in the clipper blade. Clean the base of the ear so there are no straggly hairs. The insides of the ears are clipped to the same point. Clean carefully around the ear opening. The coat at the top of the ear is blended down with thinning shears to meet the head coat more smoothly. To finish the body work, begin at the withers and working with the lay of the coat, remove the body coat on the top of the back and down the sides of the dog to the turn of the rib. Much more body coat is removed on this sporting clip than was done on the American Cocker finished with the thinning shears. Finish off the tail with the same blade as was used on the body, working from its base to the tip. Clean around the anus area. Leg coat and body skirting areas will be cut short on this dog for easy care. To do this, use a guide comb over a number 30 or number 40 Oster blade and skim off the coat on the legs. The side skirting and the chest are also done with a guide comb.
The foot is scissored short in balance to the rest of the body trim. Comb up the leg coat to fluff it for easier scissoring. Scissor finish the legs and the body to give a smooth appearance. Some pet cocker owners request shorter ear feathering to keep the ears out of the food and to prevent excess matting. Round them off nicely in balance to the rest of the short coat. The crown area of this pet cocker head was finished according to the owner's preference leaving no extra coat on the crown area above the stock. A major difference in grooming for the English cocker is the shaping of the head. There is no dome or crowning effect on the English head. The top of the skull is clipped against the lay of the coat to just behind the eyebrow. The eyebrows are then blended down with thinning shears for a soft, pleasing effect. The underside of the throat is clipped against the lay of the coat using the number 7F blade. Use the same blade to clip the cheekbone area. Change to a number 10 blade and lightly skim the top and sides of the muzzle and also the underside of the muzzle. The English cocker coat on the ears is much finer and silkier than the American cocker. For this reason, the clip portion of the ears must be done working with the lay of the coat to prevent a bare look. In this case, a number 15 blade is being used to give a velvety appearance to the top portion of the ear. Because many groomers do not know proper thinning and carding techniques for the English coat, a number seven blade can be used to remove body, shoulder, and front leg coat. The English cocker body coat carries more soft undercoat, hence more carding and top thinning is done to remove dead coat on the back of the dog. Top thinning is always done with the lay of the coat. One outstanding difference between the American and English cocker coat is the natural growth pattern of the leg coat on the English cocker. 
there is no profuse leg coat on the front side of the English foreleg. This area is clipped from in front of the elbow to the foot using the number 7F blade. The thigh and the front of the hock area on the back leg is also clipped using the same blade. The feet are trimmed short to look like cat feet. If the dog struggles while having his feet or legs worked on, ask another groomer to help hold the dog to minimize the danger of injury to the dog or the groomer. The inside of the rear hock area is trimmed shorter on an angular line to give the look of parallel lines to the rear legs whether the dog is in motion or standing still. The coat on the back of the hock bone is scissored three quarters to one inch long in length from the hock joint to the base of the foot. The English Cocker does not have the profuse coat of the American Cocker and shows definite differences of patterning. Some American Cockers also show the breed type carried over from the background of the English breeding. In that case, the grooming for the American Cocker would be influenced by the English styling. A nice specimen of an American Cocker Spaniel, finished with the correct breed profile in mind and using the thinning and carding techniques previously shown, will produce a finished dog suitable for competition or a beautiful pet companion. The same general profile as was just seen is shown here. The major difference in styling is the use of clippers to finish the body coat. Our cocker shown in a short sporting clip is ready to play in the woods and hunt in the fields. This clip was prepared with the busy household in mind and requires less everyday maintenance. The English Cocker is a larger member of the Cocker family. The patterning of the coat growth is different from what we have seen for the American Cocker. At times, we will see American Cockers whose coat growth shows a background of English breeding, and this must be kept in mind when grooming. Oster has produced a series of free booklets on dog and cat grooming. Dorothy Wallen has authored these booklets to help standardize grooming techniques and to help new groomers learn basic techniques. Oster has underwritten the production of a series of educational videotapes like this one. They have been written by Mrs. Wallen and feature nationally known groomers. For a complete list of materials available, please write Oster, Department RK, 5055 North Lydell Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53217.